back to the OTR Pop Quiz with the Senate President. The new Minuteman marching band building at your alma mater is in the building itself is named after the university's legendary and longtime band director. George his, Parks. George N. Parks, exactly. You're three for three, sir. Question four. According to the U.S. Army, soldiers during the Revolutionary War used music to communicate over long distances. Can you name three instruments that were used most often? Oh, flute, drum, and... Oh, flute, drum... Oh, uh, fife. Fife, drum, and bugle, actually. Uh, and but, bugle. Yeah, yeah. Duh. Question five. <laughs> the state official children's book is Make Way for Ducklings, and in it, Officer Michael blows a small wind instrument, often used in a marching band as well, to stop traffic so the Mallard family can cross the street. Trumpet? A whistle. A whistle. <laughs> a whistle. Okay. <laughs> that was a bad whistle, but it's a whistle. All right. You're off the hot seat, sir. Thank okay. You. Speaking of children, let's talk a little bit about school issues. The State yeah. Board of Education has decided to invent sort of a new statewide test to replace MCAS. Is this a good idea? We, uh, we are seeing a proliferation of tests. We want to maintain control at the state level. PARC is controlled at uh, national level, so it's better that we head in the direction of keeping what we have or amending what we have rather than going in the direction Even of Even if it means spending millions to invent a new test? Well, it's been 20 years, so it's time to review and revise the test anyway. So it, uh, we already have the base of the test. It doesn't mean we're going to have to spend as much. I'm not a test developer, yeah. so I'm going to assume we don't have to spend as much if we're reviewing and revising as opposed to inventing. Speaking of but I could be wrong. But it's better than going with park because we have control. Speaking of spending, you know, the, the city of Boston is looking for a billion dollars to rebuild its schools, just physically rebuild the schools, and most of the money would likely have to come from the state capital budget. Can Beacon Hill afford to help Boston? And understanding where Boston is in the state and is in New England and where its position is in the country, but can it afford to do it? We set aside a penny on the sales tax for school construction. It's been in place for at least a decade, maybe a decade and a half, and it's working. Uh, it, it means that you get on a waiting list because there isn't enough to do all the schools at the same time, but there is help available for all cities and towns. You wait your turn. A city like Boston will have a lot of schools. They can't do them all mm -hmm. at once mm -hmm. with our help, but they will get help. Um, the state's uh, child advocate released a report last week, and it basically said that C DCF is still struggling mightily with management issues and poor record keeping, despite the fact that Governor Baker has really made an effort to overhaul the system. When does the public have a right to be impatient with everything that's going on, and are you impatient yet? We are all impatient. We've been impatient for 40 years as we've changed the system over and over again, trying to improve it. At one point, we had the best child welfare system in the country. It's really fallen on hard times. Uh, we can't wring our hands. We have to focus, find the problems, and fix them. Management, policies, training, adequate staff, holding the staff accountable for implementing the policies, and not cutting the budget during fiscal crises. So as far as you're concerned, the governor is moving as quickly as he can? I think the governor and the legislature are working cooperatively to make sure that we move in the right direction as quickly as we can. Every child that is removed from a home becomes the state's responsibility. We then become their parents collectively. We need those kids treated as though they were our own children. Look at the screen if you would, sir. <clears throat> Pardon me. Finally, there's a new poll out this week from Suffolk University. It shows that 47% of Massachusetts voters think that Governor Baker is the most powerful person on Beacon Hill. The speaker got 13%. <clears throat> I won't mention the 1%. Isn't it accurate, though? Uh, the governor has the bully pulpit, and he gets to speak to the public every day through the press. Uh, the speaker and I speak once a week or so to the press through the scrum after the leadership meeting. So do you feel that you actually have a lot more power than that survey indicates? Uh, we are all working collaboratively. Oh, and some come days, on. Not the political Some days talk. the governor has the best <laughs> idea. Really... Some days the House has the best idea. Sometimes the Senate does. But the important thing is at the end of the day, do we do things that advance the interests of the public? And we do that well together. Sir, thank you so much for your time. We greatly appreciate My it. My pleasure we, to be here. As we go to break, let me just say we love having you here because this is a true politician that toots his own horn. Oh. Oh. Take a look. <laughs> Three blind mice. That was very good.